Let's look at DC-10, old aircraft. Some of you might be familiar with this example as we go along, um, but I'm going to oversimplify it a bit. Here's the accident a long time ago. Left engine on a DC-10 separates from the aircraft on takeoff. There's a real picture at the bottom. That's not a good day. Um, however, aircraft are designed with one engine out. It's got two more on the DC-10. They're designed to continue the takeoff and to climb and to do this with an engine out. Um, but that's not what happens. So what happened next is the pilot follows a standard procedure for engine out, right? We anticipated these kinds of things as engineers. We put a procedure, we trained them on it, and they did the right thing. They raised the nose to 14 degrees. They slowed the takeoff uh, to safety airspeed V2, so they slowed down a bit. Um, and this is the specified speed at which you can safely climb after an engine failure. So they're doing everything right, uh, responding just as they're trained. Um, but all of a sudden, and this is the weird part, the aircraft suddenly rolls 120 degrees. And that's where you see the picture there, uncommanded by the pilots, and it crashed. That shouldn't have happened. What is going on to cause that wing to drop so much? It, it was certified uh, to be able to, to keep flying with an engine out. Um, it killed 271 people on board. Still to this day, it's the deadliest aviation accident. Post-accident simulator recreations done uh, with 12 other pilots. Guess what? Not a single one could prevent the crash, and they all followed the procedures just like these, this crew did. What in the world is going on? There's a lot. I'm just going to point out a few bullets. Here's part of it. This engine separation caused a few things behind the scenes that the pilots couldn't, couldn't see. First thing it did is when that engine separated, it took out the hydraulic lines near the slats, which is a, a part of the wing on the front of the wing. It took out those hydraulic lines with it. That made the wing uh, shrink, if you will. I'm try trying to use language for non-aviation folks to, to stay with us. The aviation folks I know are already with us. Um, so, so the wing became a little bit smaller. These slats retracted into the wing. And, and what that does is the slats are important for being able to uh, fly slowly. They, they increase your surface area and allow you to um, uh, withstand slower speeds and give you more lift. But when it retracted, what happened is the wing began to stall. It no longer had enough lift to keep the aircraft um, airborne because these slats retracted. Now the, the pilots, what are they thinking when this is going on? Uh, not much, as you'll see. The cockpit indication incorrectly told them everything is fine. It said the slats are still extended. We've got plenty of wing area, surface area. The plane is just fine. Now it was lying to them, we know in hindsight. Um, and by the way, they can't look out the window and see this on the wing. It's not visible. They're totally reliant on this indication. What else is going on? The slat disagreement warning light. There's a warning light in case that indication was wrong. And it was inoperative. You know why? It was powered by the electrical generator on the number one engine. And we lost the number one engine. So that warning light wasn't going to come on. What else do we have? We have a stick shaker to physically stake the shake and really stake the sh shake the stick and really wake you up when things like this happen. But guess what? That was powered by the number one engine. There's one more feature we've got. There's a first officer stick shaker available. It's not powered by the number one engine. Unfortunately, it was offered, offered as an optional feature never purchased by American Airlines. If you've been studying recent events, a lot of these factors seem to keep happening. Let's switch gears and look at this in an STPA framework. We would start with a hazard, something like an aircraft in an uncontrolled flight. And one of the first questions we would ask, I've drastically simplified the control structure here, but let's see if it's enough. First question would be, what kind of pilot control actions can cause the thing to stall? And one of the first things a pilot will tell you is if you slow down, you don't have airflow, you fall out of the sky. So if you slow down behind below what's called a stall speed, you're in trouble. There's an unsafe control action. Now, the next question in STPA is not to say, oh, pilots will never do that because they're properly trained and, and smart people. What we do is say, why would a pilot think that's a good idea? What kind of beliefs might they have when they decrease speed? too slow and cause a stall on a wing like, they, like this. Well, one of the beliefs might be they believe that the current speed of the aircraft is higher than it really is. Another one is maybe you believe the stall speed is lower than it is, right? It's a comparison. Are we above the stall speed? So if either one of those beliefs is, is wrong or out of sync, we're in trouble. And we know because of the slide I just showed you, um, it was the second one. 
what happened is the, the wing re, uh, slot retracted and it changed the st stall speed below what the pilots thought it was, what they were being told it was. Next question, why would these beliefs occur? What pilot inputs would cause them to believe the stall speed is lower than it is? We ask a pilot and there's a couple things. There is actually a, a stall speed indication. Another thing is a uh, no stick shaker during a stall. That's a classic indication of a stall. So why are they gonna believe they're in a stall when there's none of these indications going off? No slat disagreement indication. They had almost no hope really of figuring out that this was going on, that they were in a stall. Last question, what process behavior would cause the slats to retract, because that's pointed out here in this bullet, uh, without a slat disagreement indication? So trying to explain this last bullet, how in the world could this happen? There are some failures, um, but there are some things like engine uh, power, uh, engine loss number one, and then that destroys the hydraulic rupture. You'd have to talk to a subject matter expert to get these last couple bullet points. But the majority of this, is pretty straightforward if you're uh, if you work in this industry. Um, this is not something that you need a PhD to do, and it fits on one slide. All right, so we've got a, a wide variety of folks on the call. I'm going to do a different example. Um, that was a really short one. If you didn't follow all the details, don't worry about it. The, I'm not trying to teach you exactly what happened in the DC-10. That's just a side effect. What I'm trying to teach you is the logical flow of questions and answers. What control actions could cause this to happen? Next question that's generated by STPA is what beliefs can cause this? Now there's more than what fits on this slide, so, so don't get the wrong idea. This is not everything that's built into STPA, but this is a, a snapshot that for a beginner can help you see the direction we're going. We're thinking carefully about these control loops and, and why in the world a pilot would think that's a good idea.